welcome to a special Hitchhiker Brewing Showcase episode of... Brutal Battle. Yeah, so I believe we said on one of the episodes that we aired prior to this that we would have a few Brewery Showcase episodes coming up. Two of them because of beers that were given to us by Kyle and Kelly Norman when we were in Pittsburgh. And one of them because we liked the brewery we went to so much that we picked up enough beers to specifically do a showcase, and that's Hitchhiker. So, we're going to talk about Hitchhiker, and uh, yeah, I'm very excited about this lineup. Actually, we've had all of these beers already. Uh, You probably don't remember all of them, though. I don't think I had the one. You... I, I think I think you just taste, yeah. tasted one sip of the third beer, but the other beers you've had, I had. you probably don't really remember our first one, though, because you didn't have a lot of that yeah. when we were at Hitchhiker. And that's another thing is, since we were at Hitchhiker, we'll talk a little bit about our experience there. So, yeah. Yeah, this will be interesting because it's one of the few times we're doing a showcase episode of a place that we've been. Yeah. We've done that a few times, yeah, but, but usually it's not a place we've been to. So, as we need to, because of Rebecca... Let's start with a beer. Oh, please. So th- I'm excited about this one. I remember liking this. It's when because we had it's it. a beer podcast, so we need to start mm-hmm. drinking. So just so you know, all of them are 16 ounce cans. That's the thing these days. And all of the label art is kind of in the same genre esque. It all has the same color background. Yeah. Which is like a grayish, bluish color, and then it has other stuff on the and front. And the same uh, lettering. Text. Yeah. Yeah. So this one is called Single Cell, and it's an unfiltered Pilsner, and it is 4.7% alcohol. Oh, crap. I cut my nails. This makes it harder to open beers. There we go. Got it. It was a little struggle. I remember quite liking this one when we had it at the brewery. I haven't had it since, but I'm excited. I'm excited about all of these. Like, honestly... Before we started recording, I said to Rebecca, I was like, this is going to be a good lineup for us. Yeah. Because we've already had them. We already know what we're getting into. There's no unknowns with the beers. All right. For being unfiltered, it's not that hazy. No. But I will assume maybe it's because a lot of that sediment's probably gone to the bottom of the can. So. We'll find out. But it looks very yellow. Yeah. Can't fully see through it. I can see through it a little bit, though. Um, Yeah. Looks like pills. So clean. Oh my gosh, it's so clean. And it smells, um, there's some straw and some lemon. Yep. And there's a bitterness to it too that makes that lemon seem kind of a bit like lemon peel. But then there's also, I feel like there's a slight orange touch. Okay, I'm going to say a slight honey. Yeah, slight honey as well. Maybe a little honey suckle as well because there's a very slight floral-y note. There's like a, a wheat characteristic. Pilsner. Very pills, pillsy yeah. s- smelling. And um, it smells, like you said, it smells clean. It smells crisp, refreshing. Mm-hmm. It just smells like the type of beer that I want to drink after I've been outside running, which I have. Which, <laughs> yeah. And we use the term running loosely. I would run well, more, but I get held back. By me. <laughs> I'm more of a walker. <laughs> okay. So what are you tasting out of this? Um... It tastes bready. Yeah, it's I would agree with bready. that. Yeah, I can agree with that. There's a nice bitterness on the finish. I like it. Yeah, it's like a nice like medium low bitterness. It's really good to the beer. Kind of cleans your palate, but I feel like up front it's like the what I was saying of like the lemon peel, it's more pronounced in the flavor than it is in the aroma. Yeah. But I like it. It's it's nice and flavorful and crisp and clean and I mean, it smells. Refreshing. I mean, it smells. It tastes like it smells. Yeah. You know? I agree. Totally. Like all of the flavor, all the nose, all the nose noses. All the noses. (laughs) That's right. um, Are in the tastes. I like this beer. Yeah. I like this beer. So tell me about Hitchhiker. When did they start? A little bit about Hitchhiker. Founded in 2014. Okay. Um, in Mount Lebanon, which I think is kind of like a subsection area of Pittsburgh or the surrounding area of Pittsburgh. Now, it looks like this is one of the breweries that was not founded by a brewer. It was founded by someone named Gary Olden, who is the owner. He's not the head brewer. He's not one of the brewers. So I I couldn't find much information on him specifically, Hmm. but I did find, and I'll talk about this later, a cool- just the cash cow? It's possible. I mean, 
for people who were opening breweries back in 2014, people were definitely back then recognizing this is a growing industry where you can definitely cash in and make some good money. So yeah, you know. So they say that they're devoted to refining time-honored styles, but also discovering new ones. So it's this kind of thing of like, we're going to, we're going to give you like the oldies and goodies, but we're also going to, you know, pioneer some of our own mm-hmm. things that we come up with, which in my opinion is definitely a good way to do your mm-hmm. brewery. Um, that way you can cover a lot of people. I feel like we saw that when we were there too. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Like, here we go. There's a Pilsner. Yeah. You know, we, one of these is an IPA and not a hazy IPA either. You know, there's, there are stouts there, but then they have some really interesting things. I'm not going to give it away. But the second beer that we have is, an interesting is a one. very interesting one. And I'll read at the end of the episode a bunch of other interesting beers that were on their website. Um, so they say they focus on the evolution of brewing and exploring the unknown, which kind of goes with the other statement I said. Those two statements are taken from their website. Um, so, yeah. But, mm-hmm. sorry, I'm taking a sip of this wonderful single cell. Unfiltered I'll Pilsner. Take a little splash yeah, it's, more. This is really nice. Like, I've been really digging some Pilsners lately. Just clean, refreshing. So the original location, like I said, in 2014 was in Mount Lebanon. And then they got a second location in Sharpsburg, which used to be the building that they got is the one with the smokestack. That's where we were. Yeah. We were in the Sharpsburg one. And that one opened in 2017. So three years after they started. And that building has a cool smokestack. It's a really cool building, in my Mm -hmm. opinion. That used to be Fort Pitt Brewing before they took it over. So it was a brewery before, so probably makes it easier to to move into. Um, They are also going to be opening a downtown space in Pittsburgh, where they're going to have a third location, basically. But this one's actually going to be focused on coffee. So they do a bunch with coffee in their beers. So this new location that's going to be a lot smaller, it's just for serving, basically. They're going to uh, open in the morning, and until noon, they will serve only coffee. And then after noon, they will continue to serve coffee, but they will also serve hitchhiker beer. Hmm. So it's like a coffee shop slash beer place, which I like that concept. I think it's great. You know, you you could technically show up at like 10, 10, 30, 11, Drink some coffee, and then as soon as it hits noon, be like, you know what? It's time for a beer. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's get after it. Mm Pitter-patter. Mm-hmm. So the new location in Sharpsburg, the one in Sharpsburg that opened in 2017, which is where we went, opened up, and they put uh, fooders in there, which we saw. Yeah. We we sat near the fooders. I remember pointing them out. I'm like, look, fooders. So they didn't really have the (laughs) space in their original location to have something like fooders, <coughs> excuse me, to have something like fooders. So, uh, in this new location, they're like, this is what we want to do. So when they put them in, they had the idea to do like Solera style sour beers, which Solera is basically where you, you know, keep, you keep it in the fooder and then you draw some out for making a beer that you blend and then you just refill the space left in the fooder tank with more of the base beer. And then it just keeps, like, mixing back in. So so they were going to do that. Uh, and they what they were using it for is what they call, they call it fractionally blending. They were taking some mixed cultured Saison and some golden sour. So the two fooders, that's what's in them. It's a golden sour, and then it's a mixed culture Saison. And then hmm. they would take portions of it out, mix them together, and then also end up adding, like, fruits, different fruits to it. So, I think that's a cool concept. I like it. So, dig it. And then, um, the last thing I wanted to say before we go to the next beer is that when they opened the second location, they hired Matt um, Gibb. Sorry, I couldn't read my own writing. (laughs) From Rock Bottom Brewery. So, if anyone knows Rock Bottom Brewery, they pulled him over and were like, hey, you help us head this new location up. Hmm. I don't know Rock Bottom, but thought maybe some people might. Throwing it out there. Okay, let's do a rinse. And then we'll get to the second beer, which is the one I'm most excited Mm. about. It's our favorite. You would probably say, but Carlin, how are you more excited for something over a Pilsner? Yeah. I know it's tough, but this was probably our favorite beer when we were there. Yeah. 
This one is actually a collaboration. It was done with Levant or Levante Brewing Company, and they're out of the same area. I think they're also out of Sharpsburg. And we actually did a brewery showcase for them. So you can go and check that out. But this is the Ripple Biscuit, which is a cream ale with Meyer lemon, coffee, wafers, cinnamon, and milk sugar. And it is 7% alcohol. Sounds weird, right? I mean, it's one of those beers where you're like... What is this going to be? Yeah, we're like, it could be really good. It could go really bad. I know. With all those ingredients, it's definitely like a... I, I understand what they're doing here, but how is the execution? And that's what it that's what it comes down to. How do you execute it? Yeah. There are breweries who, you know, they throw everything, including the kitchen sink, in, and you're just like, this does not work. And there are ones who could take those same ingredients and just make it work. Yeah. And this is one of those. It's instances. like chopped. This actually looks kind of like the single cell, but very, more orange. Very slightly. It looks very similar. But it's also kind of, you know, same level of haze mm. to it. It has, and this is probably because of the milk sugar, it has more of like a light fluffy head on mm-hmm. top of it that looks kind of creamy. Yeah. And well, it's it, also a cream ale, so. It smells creamy. Like, it oh smells like gosh. a cream ale. It smells like... Jeez. Like, you're get, definitely getting that lemon, and it is like a sugary, sweet lemon. Yeah. Um... I smell, like, a lot of the coffee. There's a ton of the coffee in there. And it's kind of, like, lightly roasted coffee. Mm -hmm. But it also smells like it's got a dairy note to it. So it's kind of like a cappuccino, almost. I mean, you're getting creamy. Like, you're getting lactose, even (sighs) though there's no lactose in the beer. Milk sugar. Milk sugar. Yeah. It's kind of the same type of thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, It smells so creamy. I'm not getting cinnamon on the smell. Yeah, I don't really feel like I get the cinnamon. I, yeah, I definitely get the, I definitely get the lemon. Um, I do feel like there's maybe a little something that seems vanilla. Yeah. I know there's not vanilla, but it seems vanilla. Okay, I take that back. I am getting the cinnamon. Oh, you know what? The vanilla might be from those wafers. wafers. That's yeah. what it might be from. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's go in and taste. This smells really good. And with the smell, the coffee always leads, which I like. Oh, see, I don't think... Do you think coffee leads in the smell? I think the mm-hmm. lemon leads. Okay. Yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. Yes. The lemon is first, but it's also very light. So it is what you get first, but it's hard to focus on that because the coffee then follows it up and it's much stronger. So, yeah. So, I see what you're again, if you would say, like... Lemon, coffee, cinnamon, you're like, what? This doesn't, it's not going to work. But it, it it works. It's so good. Yeah, it's really good. It's very easy somehow, but you get that coffee flavor. You get Mm -hmm. a little bit of the Meyer lemon. I actually do taste some of the cinnamon. Yeah. I do get that vanilla that we're getting from the, the wafer inclusion in there. And it's creamy and it tastes like a nice cream ale. Yeah, it's good. Mm. I love it. It was a magical beer, in my opinion. I've loved it every single time I've had it. And there's a little bit, like, the the bitterness is really low on it, but that's not to its detriment. Usually I like a nice bitterness to back up a lot of flavors, but this is a much lower bitterness, and I'm good with that. Everything it, it about works. this works. Yeah, it works so well. It's, like, sweet, but not too sweet. Like, it's just... It's, Those ingredients. It's Goldilocks. It's it, just, just right. Yeah. Good way of putting it. It's so harmonious. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about this brewery, Hitchhiker. So I found a cool article about uh, their head brewer that they got when they opened in 2014. So his name is is Andy Kwiatkowski. Kwiatkowski? It's K-W-I-A-T-K-O-W-S-K-I. So he originally was a Verizon call center employee. Hmm. He was a telemarketer. Um, And... Prior to that, he ended up in that place because when he went was going away to school, he actually wanted to be a chef, wanted to go into the culinary arts, and then he got a job as a line cook, and after he saw, as they put it, behind the curtain, he decided, yeah, I don't think I really want to do this. This looks terrible. So, and I've heard that that world is like a high-stress yeah. ordeal, so he ended up going into telemarketing as just a place to, you know, have a job, but he really wasn't happy with the kind of same thing every day, just punching the clock ordeal. And that's when a friend of his kind of talked to him about home brewing, and he was like, oh, 
let's let's start homebrew and let me let me check this thing out. So it became a really strong hobby of his. Then eventually he got laid off at his call center. Yes, uh, and it happened to be a good time because at that time Gary Olden, who was starting Hitchhiker Brewing, was looking for a head brewer, and so he applied and was just like, "Look, just lost my job. I've been homebrewing for a while. I know how to do this." And it fit. And here we are. What? Yeah. It's a pretty cool story. So in 2014, when they first opened their first brewery, they were making 435 barrels of beer. In 2019, after they had the two locations, they were making 5,000 barrels of beer. So that's a big increase. Um, They decided intentionally to not do hazy IPAs. And do you know why that might be? I don't know. They're they're staying away from hazy IPAs because they don't like the style. Who's down the road? Oh, Dancing Gnome. Right, because Dancing Gnome is very well known for doing hazy IPAs and doing them really well. Hitchhiker acknowledged that and said, "We're not going to do it because they're so close and they're doing such a good job with this style. We're not even going to touch it. We're going to do our own." Really? Thing. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. You don't really hear breweries doing yeah. that. Uh, and then the last thing before we do another beer, they have a thing called the Nomad, which is a beer truck that they send to events that has taps inside. Yeah, that's cool. So they can pour beer. Yeah. So it's a good time. And man, I just finished my portion of that Ripple Biscuit right now, and it's so good. God, it's just... And here's the thing. Like, taking sips of it, it tastes a, a one way. When you slug a larger portion of it in one sip, it tastes different. Like, I feel like that ups the coffee and it ups that vanilla from the wafer, which I like. So if you want to experience the beer differently, smaller sips versus bigger. Mm. Okay. So our third beer is a West Coast style IPA. Which I'm all about. Uh, I do like a nice West Coast style IPA. Now, this one is called Ramen Profit. Yes, ramen is in the noodles. And it is 7% as well, just like the Ripple Biscuit. It's got like a nice piece of artwork of like a bowl of ramen with an egg in it and chopsticks picking up the noodles. I like it. I I like ramen, so anything that reminds me of ramen is cool to me. This beer does not taste like ramen, though. I will say that. All right. No, we did not have this there. We just got cans to go. Correct. We did have another West Coast style IPA by them called the Barbarian. We had that one. Mm -hmm. So this looks like an IPA. It's very orange. It's clear. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a nut. It looks like an IPA. Smells really good. Ooh, that's got a juicy nose to it. It does. It's like real juicy Mm. orange. I get orange, but I also get grapefruit, like a real nice grapefruit. um, Sweet orange, like a tangerine or clementine. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's a little sugary on the nose, but not in a bad way. Sometimes it's like sickly sweet sugary. This is not that. It gives you a sweetness, but it just kind of takes it a little bit short of the edge of where you want it to be. Oh, it's so citrusy. Yeah. I get a good amount of grapefruit. But I also get a nice maltiness to back it up, too. Yeah. It smells mm. balanced. It smells very balanced. And I do smell a bitterness, but it's not a lot. So we'll see how that is in the flavor. Mm. It's really good. It is very balanced. Oh, yeah. Mm. You get the citrus notes. You get a little bitterness. Yeah. Um, you get a little maltiness. It's just kind of mm-hmm. all, and it's all balanced. It works really well. And I would actually say that there is a little bit of a bready note on the sure. finish of the beer. Now, the bitterness is more in the flavor than I thought it would be based off the aroma, but I dig that. That's what West Coast IPAs are about, yeah. you know, really backing it up with some with some hefty bitterness. And this is good. And then, well, and again, I'll just have to add, it's not too much bitterness because I still yeah. like it and I don't love a lot of bitterness. Right. So it's, it's, it's within check. I dig this beer, man. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, this this could be a nice go-to IPA, West Coast style oh, IPA. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, it's tasty. It's like good flavors, but it's not overstated either. And what was the APV? You said seven, seven something? Just like the Ripple Biscuit. And that's the other thing is it's relatively sessionable. Mm-hmm, it's approachable. It's not crazy. 
Okay, so now at this point I want to talk about our experience oh, at okay. Hitchhiker, and then I'll talk about a bunch of the other beers they have. Um, for people who don't, who didn't listen to the Pittsburgh excursion episode, go listen to that. We talked about the specific beers we drank there, which we drank more than, you know, what we're trying on here. Um, but overall experience, did you want to take that away? Yeah. Well, it was hard cause it was so crowded, mm-hmm. which good for them, but it just makes for not as enjoyable experience just because you I mean, you had to wait in line for a beer when you didn't. Yeah. Went in line, you felt pressure, because we felt pressure to buy cans right away, because we didn't know if there were going to be cans left. Yeah, because it was one of the, I don't know if it's every weekend that they do it, but it was a can release day for them, at least. So, they had a bunch of different beers that were available in cans. Um, so, a lot of people there just buying cans. Um, but, it cool space, kind of like industrial, like, cinder block, kind of no mm-hmm. frills. Um, they had some pinball machines over in the corner. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? The, we had the really good ice cream sandwich there. Oh, my gosh. They had a food truck. They had a food truck outside and then some snacks and stuff inside. Well, the ice cream sandwiches, I forget what the brand was, but obviously they didn't make them. But they had some, um, they had like a list of the different types of ice, ice cream sandwiches you can get. There had to be, like, ten different flavors we could have picked from. It was amazing. And we got toasted coconut, and it It was was like, chocolate chip, two chocolate chip cookies with toasted coconut ice cream. Yeah, it was unreal. It It was was amazing. And it was lactose-free. Yeah, that's what I don't get. How did that happen? I don't know, but it was. Yeah, it was just... So they uh, said, anyway. So good. But they had, like, birthday cake. They had, like, oatmeal raisin. They had... Double chocolate. I mean, they had so many different flavors. Like a salted caramel. They, like, pulled out. We're like, we have one ice cream sandwich. Can we see the list? And they, like, pulled it out. We're like, oh, man. How do you decide? Yeah, I was thinking they have, like, three or four options, maybe. Mm -hmm. But it was, like, ten. And I was, like, overwhelmed. We took way too much time. Because when we were getting that, we were also getting cans. Yeah, we were like, like, quick, decide. But, well, because you feel the pressure when you're in line. Because if there's a long line behind you, it's like, ugh. You don't want to be those people. Yeah, but they had a great beer selection. Yeah. Uh, like, it was pretty large, actually. Really something for everybody. I have a picture on my phone, so I can count it up and tell you how many beers they had on tap. It did seem to me, I'm fine with this, but some people might not be, it did seem to me like they had a fair amount of beers that had coffee in them. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, so I'm going to look. Okay, here we go. How many is a... Uh, Yeah, 15 beer. Oh, no. Yeah, 15 beers on tap. 15. All theirs, plus... They had cider there, too. Yeah, they had a cider on tap in addition and nitro cold beer coffee on tap also. So, pretty cool. And they did flights. Mm -hmm. Three eight-ounce pours for 13 bucks is what I have on there, so... And then full-size pours were, like, 650 Unless it was the, like, the, the fruited sour was seven. You know, oh, it's only everyone, 50 cents more. So everyone whatever. loved that fruited sour because it was oh, yeah. thick. Yeah, it was like really pulpy. It had a lot of stuff yeah. in there. And, yeah, but I mean, to have 15 different beers on tap, that's pretty great in my opinion. And we got, so we got two flights and did we go back for more? Uh, no, just two flights. Yeah, we just got two flights. Um, and then we bought the cans. So And the, yeah, everything we had was at least good. Yes. I didn't have a single thing that I was like, I don't want that. The the whole punch. The, res, the cheesecake. Raspberry cheesecake. Yeah, that was just IPA. okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's one where they nailed it for what it's supposed to be. It tastes like that, but you don't want to drink much of yeah, it. Yeah, you don't. Because right. it's, it's a particular flavor that you don't want a lot of. Um, but I will say where their seating was to the side where we ended up sitting. Like, there's some to the right and there's some to the left. And the, the ones to the, to the right or where the uh, pinball machines are, the ones to the left are like longer tables that are amongst the brewing equipment, and that's where the fooders are. Like, literally, you're sitting next to the fooders, which I like that kind of experience, being able to feel like you're sitting in the brewery, like a working portion of where the beer is made. So I love the ambiance there. It's really cool. Very hipstery. Yeah. It was pretty sweet. 
So they had IPAs, they had sours, they had the, the cream ale, they had a cider on tap. Um, the Pilsner here, single cell was on yeah. tap. I mean, and then we're going to have and And also, next. you know, obviously the Ripple Biscuit, a cream ale, which who has right. cream ales on tap typically? Um, Nobody. And up here next, we're going to do a coffee porter. Yeah, so let's just do that now. Um, so they really had something for everybody, which is nice too. Oh, yeah. So this last one is the Triple Shakes, and it is their Imperial Coffee Porter. It is 10.3% alcohol, so it's up there. Let's see if we... I don't re- I don't recall it tasting like 10.3% no. when I was there, but then again, we had had a bunch of beer, so we'll have to, you know, suss that out now, really. I don't want to give you a crazy amount. Ranking's going to be... Not super easy, no, I think. <laughs> okay, so what does it look okay, like? Oh dark. man, it looks like an imperial stout. It's got a nice brown oh, head man. to it. It smells like so <sighs> creamy coffee. Damn. It smells like a latte. It does well because it smells. You know how like when you smell coffee, sometimes it, it smells almost a little offensive. It's kind of acrid. It's it's kind of aggressive and rough around the edges. This it's like. Coffee that's creamy and smooth and well-rounded. Kind of like when you get a really nicely done nitro cold brew coffee. Because that kind of, cre- you know, makes it a little creamy, smooths it out. Yeah. But the, I mean, all I smell is coffee pretty It does. Much. It's just like coffee. But it's beautiful. If you like coffee, it's, it's beautiful smell. It's not too green and it's not too roasty. It's kind of just perfect. It's in the middle. Yeah, it's between those two things. And then when you taste it... Big, big punch of the coffee oh, up yeah. front. But what are you, are you tasting anything else? Or is it it has tall? a decent bitterness to it. That kind of not. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but hey, I'm good with that. Yeah. I get some dark chocolate coming in after. Because there's a little like, you know, there's a little creaminess. There's mm-hmm. definitely the coffee. There's definitely some bitterness. Yep. Yeah. Um, did you say, you said dark chocolate. I was going to say ch- chalky. Yeah, yeah, it's a little chalky on the finish. It has, like, a dark chocolate coming in at the end, very, you know, faintly. Um, It's a slight bit ashy on the finish, which I think goes along with that chalkiness and the bitterness. Um, But, yeah, it's very creamy. It's very, very creamy. And just a beautiful coffee flavor. Beautiful. Good. Um, Love that. If you love coffee, yeah, this this is where it's at. So the big question, 10.3, you think? Oh, no, not 10. It comes off as a little bit higher to me, especially because of the viscosity of it. Yeah, I'd put it somewhere around eight and a half ish. That's what it seems like to me. So yeah, it's not, it could be a little bit. It's so hard to rank these because they're also like completely different styles, which I find it's super hard to rank different styles like this. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I like them all for different reasons. Yeah. I get you. Okay, so think about that a little bit, and then I'm going to do this final portion where I'm going to talk about some of the beers. Now, I pulled it from their website, and one of the things I liked on there is that they have it categorized. Oh. So it's like, here are the, here, and the categories I have are hoppy, saison, dark, sour, and lager. Hmm. Some of them don't have a whole lot, some of them have a lot. So obviously, hoppy has a lot because, you know, that's what's popular. So we have Mystic Delusion IPA, which is an IPA with citrus and electrolytes. What? <laughs> right? So that is hysterical. You're rebuilding your electrolytes like you're hydrating while you're drinking. So this is the beer. Literally, you should have been drinking after you ran. Yeah, I know, right? I need to get that beer. I don't know when they make For it. For all of our runs. <laughs> um, three triple IPA. Uh, it's just a triple IPA. I thought it was interesting that they're doing one of those. Hard corn, which is an American pale ale with corn, cornbread, and spices. Interesting. I don't know what that would taste like. Maybe good, maybe bad. Who knows? Based off the ris- Ripple Biscuit, probably good. Uh, then they have the Box of Colors, which is an IPA with milk sugar and breakfast cereal. Hmm. Then we have the Usual Chaos, which we had on a beer mail episode from Kyle Norman. It's a sour IPA with milk sugar, raspberry, blackberry, and vanilla. Hmm. I remember enjoying that. We have the Hole Punch, which there's a series of their Hole Punch. 
We talked about the raspberry cheesecake one. Uh, the one that I wrote down that I wanted to tell you about is the pineapple upside down cake IPA. Interesting. Which is an IPA with milk sugar, vanilla, pineapple, cherry, and brown sugar. Mm. So that sounds awesome, That's in my opinion. Good. And they also had a whole punch that was strawberry rhubarb pie. Interesting. That's an IPA with milk sugar, strawberry, rhubarb, graham cracker, and vanilla. I would like to try that as well. So I mainly just, I didn't go down and go through and write down like every beer for each category. I just wrote down what sounds kind of interesting, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so for the Saison category, just two beers. La Rev, which is a raspberry Saison. Me being a person who likes oh, Saisons. That would be good. You don't see yeah. a lot no, like that. No. People don't do Saisons a whole lot. And then in that same category, they have their Hammer and Wedge, which is a grisette. Oh, yeah, you don't see that a lot either. Right. How many people do grisettes? Then we have the Dark Area, where they have Delayed Apparition, which is a dark lager. How many people are doing that one? So really showing you range here. Yeah. Uh, Dark Post, which is an imperial stout with toasted coconut, coffee, cinnamon, and milk sugar. Oh, I bet that's really good. (laughs) I wrote that one down for you because I knew you would be into it. Now, this one, I think the name is amazing. It's Oreo Speedwagon. (laughs) Okay. And you can guess what's in it. It's a chocolate milkshake imperial stout with milk sugar, Oreos, and vanilla. Chocolate milkshake. Stout. Stout. Chocolate milkshake imperial stout with milk sugar, Oreos, and vanilla. Hmm. Then the breakfast buffet, which I think you would also want, which is an imperial stout with coffee, maple syrup, and cinnamon cereal. So probably like a cinnamon French, no, cinnamon crunch toast yeah. or something like that, you know. Um, then for the sour category... We have Fading Light, which is an amber ale with ginger, lime, and molasses. Mm. Sounds interesting. We have Send It, which is a smoothie sour with raspberry, peach, and mango. That's probably really good. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Next to Normal, and they have a whole series of the Next to Normal beers, but I wrote down one in particular, which was with peach and coffee. It was a sour peach with... Peach and coffee. Yeah. They love their coffee. I know, right? But doesn't that sound like an awesome yeah. combo, peach and coffee? I would say that would not work, except the lemon and coffee work. So I'm going right. to go ahead and say they would make that work somehow. So they also have versions with blueberry, strawberry, or raspberry. Interesting. So, uh, and then their subsurface series, which was... We had the all berry subsurface smoothie sour. So they're just smoothie sours. There's a bunch of different ones. I wrote down there's one that's a... Peach and Blueberry. That's probably mm. really good. So I have interest in that. Then they have their Agrio, which is a pink lemonade margarita goza, hmm. which sounds tasty. Then they have their Cultured Creature, which is a Berliner Weiss with fruit, and they vary up. That's kind of another one that's one of their lines of sours. So they're like, here's a Berliner Weiss, and then we put a different fruit in each of the versions. And then the last one for the sours is Frequency Pattern. It's a dark dark goza with cherries never even heard of a dark goza didn't know it was a thing so that's cool a lot of sours aren't you don't get a lot of dark sours Mm -mm. no i mean i'm blown away whenever we have a place that will do like a dark saison well first of all i'm blown away when anyone does a saison further so when it's a dark saison i think i've had one dark sour um we had a really good we actually have one in the basement uh, that's really good by Burley Oak out of Berlin, Maryland. It's their dark matter. It's like a sour oh, porter. Okay, so I've had two, I think. Well, and Tart of Darkness. Oh, okay. And a few different versions of that's Tart of true. Darkness by the brewery, or Brewery Teru. So, okay, they're well, out I've there. Had, yeah, I've had more than I thought I did, though. They're out there. They're not common. And then the final category, only a few beers in this, three of them. It's the lager category. They have their Vorkel, which is a German pilsner. They have their Victim of Circumstance, which is an India Pale Lager, and then their Outer Planet, which is just a straight pills. But I want to include that include that because they're doing more than one Pilsner, because then yeah. they have the single cell here. That's cool. I dig it. Okay, so what do you think about Hitchhiker? I mean, I loved it. I loved the yeah. beers. I, I mean, good for them that they were super busy on a Saturday. It made me mm-hmm. not love the experience because, you know, I don't yeah. love crowds, but... Whatever you can't control that. Yeah. Um. And love the beer. Yeah, the beer it's really was good. the most important part. Beer wise, it was definitely our favorite. Yeah. 
of our of our trip. So it was great. Totally dig it. Because for me, it was just a nice. I think the reason we like them so much is they stick to the like like they said they stick to the basics, and then they also have some interesting things. And the interesting things they did well. Yeah. So uh, and you, I like that. Yeah, you can get a large offering and having 15 taps and a lot of different stuff because one of the things we talked about on our Pittsburgh excursion trip is that like we liked dancing gnome but they didn't have a ton of variety yeah. like that was the thing it's like a lot of IPAs brew gentleman was the same way a lot of IPAs they had it's a like few all other IPAs. things when i go in i want to be able to do like samplers and i want to be able to taste a bunch of different stuff especially if it's my first time in there and, and i want to find out how are they in general like Show me a bunch of your different types of beers. I don't want just like, here's six different versions of a hazy IPA, and then there's like two or three other styles available. Yeah. Um, so I think that's one of the things I really appreciate. Grist House was also kind of that way as well, which I appreciate about them. So that's why those two were actually my favorites. Mm-hmm. So Okay. You ready to rank them? I am. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So my number four is going to be the Ramen Profit. Which is the West Coast IPA, although it is quite good. That's the thing. Like, these are all very oh, good. Our so. lineup's already totally different. Okay. So, the Ram- <laughs> Ramen po- Profit West Coast IPA is my number four. My number three is the Triple Shakes Imperial Porter with Coffee. Also, once again, very, very good. My number two is the Single Cell Unfiltered Pilsner. Really digging that beer. Super crisp and clean and just tasting great. And obviously my number one, because it's such a crazy beer that how does this work, but it works beautifully, is the Ripple Biscuit, which is the cream ale with Meyer lemon, coffee, wafers, cinnamon, and milk sugar. Um, I want more of that. (laughs) Like, I want a bunch of four packs of that beer. Okay. So it is hard because they're all very good yeah. and they're all very different. So yeah. I really like them all for different reasons. Same here. Um, so my number one, because I go opposite order than you. Sure. My number one is the Ripple Biscuit. My number two is the Ramen Profit. Oh, okay. Okay. My number three is Single Cell. Okay. And the number four wow. is Triple Shakes. Wow. Okay. This is messed up because... You're the coffee, per- the big I coffee know. person, and the big stout slash porter person. I thought for sure that triple shakes was going to be like two, one or two for you. Mm-mm. I like it. It's just compared to the other offerings and compared to other coffee porters that I've had. Um, I mean, they're all good. You know what I mean? It's kind of like I'm defending. Right, right. No, I know. I'm defending a good beer that I I shouldn't have to defend because they're really all... Really, it's like I have a favorite. Like, the Ripple Biscuit's my favorite and the rest are, like, all number twos. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. I think I know why you probably put the Triple Shakes as four. Why? I think it's because of all the beers, it's closest to a one-note flavor beer. That, too. Because the coffee's very prominent. It's... I mean, it's just not anything special. Yeah. Like, um... It is, you know. Uh, I, I, I hate, think it is. I know. I hate to say that. I hate to say that because it is. Well, well you're but talking compared to the other beers. The other beers that here. we have yes. is just kind of I like agree. it's not as complex, or it doesn't mm-hmm. just, um, yeah. Yeah. But anyway. when, you, when you taste it against these other three beers, it does seem not special. But when you compare it to other, like coffee imperial stouts, it is special. It is because of but, how smooth and well done it is. You know, but I, I mean, I've had, I've had. Others that are better than that, but you know, sure, it's I, still, I still really good, and we will enjoy the rest of these for sure. Oh, I'm so excited! Just keep sipping on I these, know. and just one of my favorite things is when we're done recording and we have a really good lineup of beers like this, and I can just like I'm gonna drink a little bit of this, I'm drink a little bit of yeah. this and this, and just jumping, <sighs> love it. Variety is the spice of life, people, and Hitchhiker showcases that. I think. So, awesome Hitchhiker. Hey, if you guys hear this and you don't want to just, like, mail us beer as a thank you, yeah. that'd be cool. <laughs> you don't have to, but but if you did, it'd be great. Uh, send us an email, brutalbattlepodcast at gmail.com. That's for anyone. And I'm not even going to plug the social medias because I don't even care anymore. But okay. Rebecca works the Instagram. I'd though. work the Instagram's Insta. cool. So, do that one. Do Insta's the Instagram. fun. Brutal yeah. Battle Podcast. Yeah. Do that one. 
So cool. Thanks everyone for checking this out and keep it brutal.